Council meeting Monday, January the 5th, 2015, 7 p.m. without come to order. We have a roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Craybacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Thank you. Hey, we will now, first I want to welcome everyone here. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. You know, it's cold out tonight. We'll try to make this as brief as we can this evening. And if you'll now join us, please. Councilman Bill McIntyre will be there for the Stand up. Let's pray. Lord, the new year gives us the opportunity to start anew in facing our challenges. We ask you grant to this assembled body the patience to hear new perspectives and the knowledge to find the right solutions. As we exit the Christmas season, let us always remember the meaning of the holiday. As the Magi bestowed gifts, may we also be generous in our undertakings and be blessed with warm hearts and warm homes to friends, family, and neighbors in the spirit of universal brotherhood. We thank you for what you have given us and be with us as we make do with what we have. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Could I join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? We use the flag in the back, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, thank you all for being here. If you have a cell phone, if you please put it on vibrate and turn it off. I surely appreciate it, so it doesn't interrupt the meeting. Uh, I need action on the minutes of regular meeting, December 15, 2014. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cravenbacher, second by Mr. Mac Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> no discussion. Anybody file the minutes? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass six to zero. Thank you, sir. Communications. Any communications here? None this evening. None this evening. All right. We're into the city manager's report. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd like to start tonight with the service discussion and an update uh, with our service director, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. So I want to give a quick update on the current meter upgrade project. Uh, first section to get started was north of Lake. Uh, out of 1,100 uh, notices that we sent out, we are down to about 300 for non-compliance uh, minus vacants. And I think we have about 40, 45 vacants. So uh, we're moving pretty good with getting that section completed. The south side has been also started. Uh, south of Lake as a whole, we're approximately 50% complete with the city so far. Uh, so we're making progress. So if you could pass on to your neighbor, if they haven't got their meter changed, uh, we're still working on phone numbers that weren't good from the get-go. So we're looking at some door knockers, things like that. But we're trying to do as many phone calls to get meters changed before we do door knockers and start the, the demand process to be able to get in and get the meter changed. And that's all I have this evening. Council, any questions? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, so, is my meter gets read now from the computer? Uh, currently, your meter gets read with a handheld device, and by the end of the project, your uh, meter will be read by a collector sent directly to the city building. Well, I don't have a meter now. That's uh, why I got the electric, the new one. Yeah. You know, it took, by the way, it took 20 minutes. <laughs> but anyway, so I don't, you know, so it's not connected to the one outside. No, correct, correct. The ARB box, the little black box that's outside. Yeah, that's, that we that's just connected. You can just disregard. You get uh, get rid of it. Okay. Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. it, then Kathy's looking at it in the, in the computer. Then? Uh, not yet. Um, currently, what we're doing until the data collectors that run the fixed network part of it is completed. Currently, we drive by with a handheld just during the meter reading um, time of the month. Uh, once the collectors are up, then you will get the uh, hourly readings coming directly to the city building every hour. Currently, we're just right now with this the handheld, we're going by once a month. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Mr. Kiko, could you go over what the temperature is coming down again from last year with all the 
issues we had with people's pipes freezing out that went from the street to their houses. Can you just go over uh, what they can do as far as you know, leaving their, their faucets trip a little? Uh, currently, in this part of the season, there, there's no worry of uh, the frost line moving down. Uh, we have no, the frost is not at any point right now. It's still uh, ground is thawed, but it's going to take a good, um, probably close to a month of straight weather like we had last year to get a frost line to where it starts really pushing downwards. So right now, there's no um, problems with it. But as time goes on and you feel you have any uh, questions, call us first at the city and we can let you know, you know, because we're always digging in the dirt somewhere. We can kind of let you know what the frost line is and let you know if we need to, uh, you know, uh, be able to run the water to keep it from freezing. Thank you. Anyone else? Going back to the meetings, I've had a couple of people say to me that they had people in to change their meter, but they could not do it because it was coming out of the wall and it was like rust or something where the union was. Mm -hmm. Is that up to the homeowner at that point to do something with that? Or are we going to go back with them again? Uh, no. How is that going to be handled? If we get into a situation where a bad valve, bad pipes, uh, not enough room to work, whether it's not enough to work, room to work because the pipe is too mm -hmm. close to the wall or we can't even get behind the hot water heater, um, that is a homeowner's responsibility to a either move the hot water heater or things out of the way to get to the meter change, or um, redo their plumbing to be able to get us to do the meter change. And have we had many instances with that at this point? Uh, we've had a couple where we've had to go back, um, I, and actually I've been to someone's home to personally check it, and it, they did. They had a bad um, galvanized uh, elbow. I said you need to get that fixed before um, anything happens with it. But we did a meter change out in there, but we just let some people know that you do have some bad pipes. So we'll go back in then and change the meter once it's repaired. But um, yeah, that's responsibility of the homeowner. And we have found out a couple of elected to replace some, a lot of their line because they didn't realize how bad it was. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Yes. yes. How many have actually had to go back and do their whole piping? Or to fix their entire piping, instead of like a piece here, a piece there, had to fix everything. Um, most of the, when I, whole piping is usually just in their foundation wall. Uh, we've had two that have replaced it all the way to the curb stop. And how much does that typically cost the homeowner? Oh. Uh, to replace it at curb stop, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, you're probably in, in a couple thousand maybe. I, I couldn't even if you're think lucky. to very lucky. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, then. Uh, continuing with the informational items, uh, in your packet was a copy of the latest Clark County Combined Health District monthly report. Um, and then also, you'll see in your packet, it's time for our annual town hall meeting again. Um, normally, we've been holding that on the first meeting in February, which would be February the 2nd. And in the past, what we have done is moved the council meeting to 6.30 and then followed it at 7 with the town hall meeting. If that's what council would like to do, we would need a motion to set the town hall meeting and to, to move the time of the council meeting to accommodate that. Council, how do you feel about well, that work, what we've done in the past? For the town hall meeting would be, say, at 6? Is that what 6.30 normally? 6.30 6.30 is the council meeting, and then we go right into the town hall meeting after that. Council meeting first, then the town hall mm -hmm. Does that sound what we would like to do? Right. Yes? Okay. We need a motion for that. May I have a motion, please? Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for the town hall meeting. Um, I would change the council meeting on Monday, February 2nd to 6.30. And have town hall meeting right after that. Second. Yeah, well, that's sir. That was the already had written down. Right. <laughs> it's it's in stone Ask. almost. Okay. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass six to zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And that is the end of my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions for the Yes, sir. I had three <laughs> agendas. 
I was impatient. <laughs> the one with the Happy New Year is the one Mr. Collier did. That's mine. You've got They're the same. Oh, then you were lucky. You got two copies of the same one. Sorry. <laughs> either that or he got either that or he got into somebody else's mailbox. Oh yeah, <laughs> that might be. Any other questions for the Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any committee reports? I'm sorry. You need to back up. I even have to highlight it. Any comments from the public tonight? Anyone like to speak? Anyone? On anything? You're not the public. Sir. You're the public. Anyone out? You would, sir. Could you go up to the podium, please? Tell us your name and your address. You call my name now? Yes, sir. Anything? Revelant to the city. Need your name and your address, sir. Oh, I don't know. My name is Ronald Cobb, 202 Bill of Rock. All right. You're all wanting to go to a half percent increase in city income tax. You got waste in the government. You bought a school down here for $350,000 that you're going to convert, convert over to a civic center or a government center. You found out you got asbestos in there. Now you can't use it. You don't have the money to tear it down because it's going to cost you. Who's paying the property tax on that? I don't believe there is any property tax on it, is there? No. Could I, ad could I address his other sure points? Um, first of all, I believe we paid about 190000 when they bought it. That was a previous administration, and it was about 190000 is what they bought it for. Um, the reason that we're not converting it isn't because of asbestos. Most of the asbestos is gone. Um, the reason we're not converting it is because the last estimate we got was about $5 million. We do not have a budget to do that either. Um, at this point, it's quit pouring good money after bad, and we're going to cut our losses and try to get rid of the building. You're right, we don't have the money to tear it down. Um, we would like to sell the building so that we can try to recoup some of it and get some houses built there so that we have residents in that area. And um, we are tax exempt on that since it was city owned property. So we are not, the only expenses we were paying was to uh, mow the grass and we were paying electricity, but that's been out for like three years. Uh, we were paying liability insurance. But what you put in the paper here a while back was what? You had in there what it's going to cost to demolish it, plus you also put in the paper you was trying to give the property away. Mm -hmm. Well, we would like to sell it, but nobody wants to buy it, so now we would just like to get rid of it so we're out from under the liability. But that's a waste of money. It is a waste of money, but it's also we feel like it's a waste of money to keep pouring good money after bad. We're not going to ever going to have the money to redo it. We don't have the money at this time, nor do we want to spend the money to tear it down. At this time, we want to cut our losses. It was a decision that shouldn't have been made a long time ago, but we are trying to live with a decision that was made a long time ago and make it right. I understand you wasn't around when that was bought. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. But over the years, you sold the city building you had downtown, Merrill Main Street. You moved to Church Street where, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, you're paying rent. That's correct, and that's, again, that was not a decision that I would have made. Again, that was not a good decision, but we have to live with what we've got, and we're trying to make it right now. Those were bad decisions, and, you know, we can't go back and undo them, so we're trying to fix, to fix what, you know, what we can. But how do you come back and, and want the public to find trust in you? Well, I'm trying to explain that it wasn't us that did it, and we're trying to be honest and above board with you and to try to fix it, to fix things that we see are wrong. That's what we have done for the last, since I've been the city manager, we have worked to, to fix our infrastructure, to fix the fire department equipment, the wastewater plant. Those have been our goals. Um, we can't see putting more good money after bad at the, at the school. We know that it's not going to be anything we can use. I'm not blaming you. I understand it was in the previous administration. Administration, right? But you need to sit back here some way to get rid of that building. Yes, sir. It's an eyesore. It definitely me. is. Okay. 
I mean, that's not the only waste we have in, in the government. You've got people in town who are very upset because you got waste in the fire department. I would, I would love you to point out where you see waste, and I would like to address it you honestly. You got a $60,000 pickup that a guy drives around, an EMS 52, who goes around and helps out the squad. That's okay. The, uh -huh. But 99% of the time, the guy does not make a removal on that. You're paying a, a gas and a vehicle to respond. A lot of times, he's supposed to get there before the squad gets there. Mm -hmm. I've seen him get there before the squad and he stands there and waits until the EMS shows up. Mm -hmm. What's the use of moving the final? Okay, that, I believe you're talking about our battalion um, vehicle. Yeah. How is that the pickup truck, do you remember? I can't mm -hmm. remember which vehicle it is. I think that you're talking about the battalion. Yes, sir. Right. That I was is on the fire department. I'm I sorry? I was a lieutenant on this fire department. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. I'm glad that and you were doing that. And I know how it was that. then. When Charles Harvey was chief. Mm -hmm. But now you're sitting here looking at a person who drives a vehicle, drives up the park lane, and the duty crew takes a ladder truck to go down the park lane when all three of them could have rode the same vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure of what the circumstances were when you saw them do that. If it were they on a on a run? Yes. Okay. The purpose of the battalion vehicle is to have somebody in charge on the scene at all times. So yes, he probably did get there before the squad. He took command of the situation. That we have found it to be more um, cost effective to have somebody there on the scene in charge to help. It's a, another pa another pair of hands at every scene. But there is waste right there of gas for that vehicle to run down there when you got two people riding in another apparatus. That is what. Correct me if I'm wrong. Five man crew, six man crew. Are you talking about the squad? On the area. Oh, the aerial. Yeah, they're between five and seven minutes. Probably so. Right. Yeah, they run three to four. Right, but I, I mean, when the aerial gets called to Bethel Pike or whatever, the duty crew a lot of times takes off, which is two people. Your battalion 52 responds in the pickup. That's ridiculous. Well, you know what? Instead of us arguing or discussing it at this point, maybe it would be, good, be a good um, idea. I'd like to hear your ideas. If you'd like to come in sometime, we could sit down with the chief. With your experience, maybe you could give us some ideas to help change it to make it better. Well, I mean, that's fine then. But when I run, your chief didn't run down with you. Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cobb, we allow five minutes for people to talk, and the five minutes is, is up at this point. And the city manager just gave an opportunity, if you would, to get together with her and also the chief and voice your concerns and see if things could be changed. We'd love to hear your your opinion on that, if you would, please. All right, sir? Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. We appreciate you coming out. Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cobb, we are having a work session next Monday to talk about the cuts and the budget. And if you want to come, your input is welcome. That's here Monday at 6.30 on the 12th before the you, OSU sir. game. Anyone else on the public? Please Anyone at all? I would, please. Please. My name is Val Herdman, and I live on Pike Street, and many of you know me as um, the pool manager, and I want to thank council and city employees, the administration, for taking consideration of all the cuts that are coming. Um, we know it's a rough time right now, um, keeping to balance our budget, and um, I just want to put a thought in your mind. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make the work session next week, but the pool is a vital asset to our community. In the summer, um, I see probably every child in our community at least once. We see people outside of our community. Last year, we had people coming from Bellbrook, Fairborn, Beaver Creek, Springfield, Tip City, Troy to visit our pool. They could do nothing but talk highly about our pool. It is one of the few remaining public pools in the area. So I understand that we have to make cuts. But I just wanted to put that little plug out there for our, our kids and our community and the people in our community that the pool is a vital thing for our community and we really should try to keep it up. So I just wanted to commend you for doing what you're doing and making the cuts. And I've even heard some of you say that you are willing to cut your salary. I really appreciate that. But um, you know, let's, let's think of our kids when we start to make these cuts. 
um, they're important. And I don't know if that's what we need to put out there. Um, I did finally see it in the paper that our pool may not open if we don't pass this levy because I do know we have to take from other things to balance other part of the budget. And that's understandable because I want a police and fire and streets in my community. That's what keeps our community safe. But I also think we need to keep in consideration of the children in our community and look out for their best interest also, those who can't speak yet. So thank you very much. Thank you, Val. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Anyone else on the audience like to speak? Okay. Mr. Zambach, do you have a couple of words to say? Yeah, but I forget what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zambach. Just thank you, man. You certainly can. Val, sir, just send that real quick. You say you may or may not be at the meeting next week? Okay, because I, I would like to, if it's not at that meeting, uh, whether we get together with Howie, Ken, and you or something and, and talk about, you know, the options with the pool, depending on, you know, if it does or does not pass, just if that's possible. Sure. Mr. Craven, uh, I know the pool is very valuable. You know, uh, I've raised six boys and we've used it a lot when they were younger. And, uh, but we do take a lot of money out, like you said, out of one area and put it in there. And it kind of hurts the balancing of the budget. You know, but I'm, I'm with Mike. I would like to talk with the staff sometime. You know, and if you do that, I'd like to be with you. You know, and how could we make that more profitable? You know, either more events, you know, something. I don't know how to grab people from the new heights and go in there. But somehow, They're coming. <laughs> well, somehow that we have to do it. And there's a reason why a lot of the pools are closing because they are not profitable. And they cannot be affordable. So there's a way to do it. I would love to try to do it. Amen. Anyone else? Yes. I feel like I should say something because I think I was one of the, the people who, who brought up the pool situation and closing the pool. Um, for me, it's it comes down to to services and if we can find when we're looking at this budget if we can find ways to make it work without cutting something that the kids need without cutting people's jobs or without cutting amenities like the pool then that's the way that we want to go so first and foremost it's I, I may have come across like I was attacking the pool and I'm sorry if I sound like that would what I should have said if I said it better is that we need to find ways to move money around to make it work so we can keep the pool. So I do apologize if I came across as if I was attacking the pool. I didn't mean that. And I do know that it's really important. We're one of the few pools in the area, and it's great to hear that people from all around are coming here, and that's really great news. So thank you for coming. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone out in the audience? Anything? Okay. Thank you. We'll go on then. Committee reports this evening. Any committee reports? None tonight. Okay, Resolutions are done tonight. Ordinances, we have a few ordinances. If you would please, go ahead. Ord ordinance 14 57, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1066 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio regarding the cemetery in general. I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance 14. Second. This is um, an update on the cemetery ordinances um, as far as the rates that we currently charge every year. We review what our rates are. Um, Greg, our superintendent, checks with the surrounding cemeteries to compare what we are doing with what they are doing. Um, and we felt that um, since we Normally, every year we have to transfer money from the general fund to keep the cemetery fund in the black. If we can raise the rates just a little bit, it may help us not to have to do that. The general fund is what's really hurting right now, so anything we can do to avoid over, over stressing it, I think is a good thing. Any questions? Anyone? Okay, Mr. Collier, Mr. Mr. Reynolds? Yeah. Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes, it's needed. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Pass six to zero. I think Ethan said no. He said, he five, said no. five to one. Five to one. To one we, we didn't hear you. We thought you said yes. That's okay. I'm going to give us a recording. <laughs> 
What if he says yes? Yeah, he said abstention. Absence. Okay, passed five to one. Thank you, sir. Go on to the next ordinance when you're ready. Ordinance 14-58, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an addendum intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners regarding wastewater service. Mayor. Yes, please. Um, I would like to ask council to please let this ordinance die from a lack of a motion. Um, we are still waiting uh, to get the final agreement back from the county and I don't want you to vote on an agreement that you don't have the, all you have is a draft and I wanted you to have the completed one. I'm hoping, I thought we would have it by now, so I apologize for that, but we will bring it back as another ordinance later. Council, is that all right? Council, just bring it back to us. Okay. Thank you. We'll go on then, please, next ordinance. Ordinance 14-60, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending subject to the approval of the electors of the city of New Carlisle, section 880.04A of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle in order to increase the rate of the municipal income tax of the city to 1.5% effective July 1, 2015. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Will we adopt ordinance 14 60 Second. And as explanation of this ordinance, this is not voting to increase the income tax. This is voting for us to put it on the ballot. And this is actually only step one. We also have to do a resolution later. So this is not saying that the income tax is going up. This is just giving the citizens a chance to vote on whether they want it to go up or not. Mr. Craver, do you have a question? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. When is the deadline that, that we have to have this at the Board of Elections? February something. I don't have the exact date off the top of my head, oh, but it's February. Of, February. Yeah. We only time. have a couple more council meetings left. That's why we don't have a lot of time to... Uh, Plus, we'd have to do a resolution. Maybe. Right. Just 75 yeah. days prior to the election. Right. I, I'm sorry, I don't have that date in front of me, but it is February. For a, for a May election, it's February. For a November it's, election, it's, it's August. The end of, uh, February. It's like February 23rd, 90 days before the primary. Any, other, any questions? Anyone else? I've got something. That, you know, according to the minutes, you know, last, you know, at the last meeting, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to read what it says exactly. Because, you know, it said, um, Rick Lowry shared, if we are going to ask the citizens for new money in May, we need to tighten our belts to show the citizens we are serious about needing the new revenue. This as council was in agreement to find as many possible cuts to the budget in the work session before making a decision to cut definitely at this time. You know, my you know, I guess my thought is, you know, we should maybe wait until after the work session to see if we can, you know, have to wait a little bit. Yeah, and we will be doing that, but again, this is just the first step of this job at this point. That's what it is, so that's, that's where we are at this point. But yes, I agree with you. We'll definitely go to search it out at the work session next Monday night. Chop, chop, chop. Okay. Anyone else? Anything? Mr. Collier, would you call for the vote? Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Kraybacher. Yeah. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Yeah. Mike Lowry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pass four to two. No, you had two notes. Yeah. Yep. Four to two. Yeah, four to right. two. Is that still yeah. about That's to right. pass? That's not a. It's not an emergency. Okay. Okay. Okay, hey, could we go on to the next ordinance, please? I would, we were just trying to determine if 4 to 2 actually passed this ordinance. That's not an emergency. All right. Okay. Ordinance. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so could we go on to the next ordinance? Ordinance 14 61, public hearing in action tonight. 
an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding, MOU, with the Board of Clark County Commissioners. Mayor, yes, I again would like to ask council to uh, let, uh, let this one die from lack of motion as well. This is sitting on the same person's desk, so we're waiting for the final agreement. Okay. Council, is that what you'd like to do? So we're now at other business. Yes. Uh, I believe we need to excuse uh, Councilman Rick Lowry this evening. Could I get a motion for that, please? Mr. Mayor, I'm yes. going to excuse Councilmember Rick Lowry. Second. When you're ready, Mr. Todd. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? It's all applied tonight, yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. He is excused. Thank you. I also say yes. <laughs> you missed it, you? Most people do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. We're going to have to stroke him a little That's bit. That's right. He goes there. All right, uh, we could go on if you would mind reading the rest of that, please, Mr. Collier. City offices will be closed on January uh, 19th, 2015 for Martin Luther King Day. Please note that the council meeting will be that following Tuesday on January the 20th at 7 p.m. There will be a joint government meeting Monday, January 26, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. at the Bethel Township Firehouse. And as we mentioned before, there'll be a council work session next Monday, January the 12th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House to discuss budget cuts. Okay, so just to reiterate on that, the public's definitely welcome for that. We would like to have input. You can be here, please be here. Again, it's right here next Monday, 6.30. I believe Mr. Lowry was going to say something. Yeah, I just would like to thank everyone who made it uptown uh, on Main Street for the ball drop on New Year's Eve. It was, it was probably the coldest one we've we've done so far, but it was a, it was a nice turnout. So I just want to thank everybody for coming out and enjoying a nice uh, nice night with the town as a whole. Happy New Year. <laughs> she thank you. Right. She's right there. That's right. <laughs> she did a great job. Anyone else? Yes. Oh, that's right now. But I won't say. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. A meeting or two ago, uh, one of our citizens said that a stop like sign fun. should be at Scott and Linden. And I know that was referred to the meeting for examination. So we can see what we have we received any information. A couple things are still in the works. We have installed a speed sign to work on, on some data collection and two we are working on a, possibly getting a proposal from an engineering firm to possibly um, from our local TCC to help us with a, a study. I also have another engineer on board has given us a proposal to uh, look at a few options there. We were given the chance to have the study done for free, so we took that opportunity for the future. Um, eventually, we want to work on Church Street in that area, so we wanted to have the plans ready to know what our options were um, if we have the opportunity to work on Church or Linden. So right now, there's no immediate plans for anything in that area. Um, we're just keeping that with our, our future plans on um, street repair. Uh, the, the next work session is going to be a very important one and it's going to affect a lot of things. And is it possible to uh, say yes, no, maybe so, or think about it? Or, uh -huh. You know, um, since we're talking about cuts or whatever, we don't know a lot. At least I don't. You know, I don't know what, you know, what we could really cut without cutting our own throat. Is it possible to have a supervisor or somebody, some of the workers or something, come and 
and it gives ideas, or have you already done that? Um, or could you have meetings you know, with them to, to try and kick that around? Well, there's, we're, we're trying to work on the general fund, so it's going to be the departments that are affected by the general fund. Is that what you mean? Yes. And you yeah, want... The street department. Right. Well, um, so you want them to come in and give us suggestions on what to cut? Well, you know, give them the option. Give them the option. Well, because you'll be surprised how many, you know, we all heard the programs before, how many, you know, ideas the employees have, you know, what they see during the day and everything. And that, this comes from one of my, from my stepfather, who used to be vice president of the Standard Register. So anytime they wanted some information, they would go down to the press room right. and get it right straight from the horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. Because sitting up here, you know, they don't believe that it's well. no. it, It's just an idea of maybe you have a staff meeting and, and, and do the same thing. Right. Normally, when we have a staff meeting, it's just the superintendents, but they do pass the word on to the employees. I hope that my employees feel like if they have an idea that they are always welcome to come in and, and talk to us about that. We try to keep our door open that they know that they can come talk to us. But I'll take your advice and maybe send out a memo and tell them that, you know, please, if you see something that you think is worthwhile to, to talk about, jot it down so that we can, you know, look it over. Yeah, let's give them the opportunity. Sure. You know, I know places I work, you know, they, they have committees, you know, employees. We call them coffee sessions. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, it was very valuable. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Uh, I would like to make a suggestion and ask council if they would like to have the work session videoed so we could put it on YouTube. Do you think that would be a good idea? It's appropriate. Is it going to cost the city money to do, I'm assuming? <clears throat> I would think to have someone there to video, possibly. But what type of money are we talking about? I just thought it might be a good idea that way it could be out, people could look at it and actually see it if they can't make it. It's an idea that I have on that. Yeah. It is a good opportunity for people to see if they can't make the meeting. Um, it's a nominal fee to for the you know to pay the person to be here. Um, I would think about that we could thirty, probably... forty dollars, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Thirty, forty dollars. Hmm? I'm totally for it, yes. 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 Council? Well, would you like it? $60. Well, I'm asking what would you like? Would you like yeah, that video fine. so the public could watch yeah. it? Yeah. Does that work for everyone? Sure. Okay, we would like to ask to have that video then. I, I will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone help again tonight? Anyone have anything to say before we close out tonight? Again, thank you all for being here. Thank you for speaking, sir. We appreciate it. If you could get together, we would certainly appreciate it. I'll be right to write it. It would be good. Anyone else? Anyone on staff have anything to say? Else? Any other Mr. Zambach. I move we adjourn.